Hello everyone, it's another too early episode and today we're going to fix Vim and Tmux's clipboards. So come along on a magical ride. First we're going to go over what's wrong. <clears throat> so uh, at first glance it seems like Tmux can do a lot. Uh, the copy mode is pretty pretty robust. It scrolls through buffers pretty well. I can select things. I can even move in Vim style by words. Um, and it, it copies things pretty well. And I can play that back in another screen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up another one down here and paste. And Bash doesn't like it because I've got a whole bunch of garbage in there, of course. But that's not garbage, that's Python. So let's do Python 3.4. And a little bit lower. Okay, so now we've got some Python code up here and we want to do fun things with it down there. We can do that. Tmux lets us do that. Get into copy mode. Uh, let's do it like that. Enter, go down a window. Paste. Ta -da. Very cool. And we can even do stuff that's a little bit cooler. I think that's going to catch the D. That's not. Never mind. So, at first glance, it looks like Tmux can handle this pretty well. But things start to break down a little bit when we start getting here. So what I've got here, this little, this little line continuation right here, I don't know if you can see that, it's on that next line right here. That is a Unicode character that does not exist in my text. If I take, um, if I take this portion of the text and copy across it, hit yank and put it down here, there's no weird character there. This character doesn't exist in my text. It's only a visual glyph which indicates that the line continues on the next line. <clears throat> so Tmux picks that up though, which Perl doesn't... Perl. Ugh. Which Python doesn't technically mind until you start passing Unicode characters to some libraries and then weird stuff starts happening. <clears throat> but it still looks like we can do lots of stuff. Here's an entire function that we copy down. Ta da! You know, Tmux, Vim, woohoo! Uh, but what happens when we get a little bit larger? Oh, look at our object list down here. I'll just do a uh, VAP and it'll select all of these items in the object list and that is all of them it selected it by paragraph not when I move my cursor though yank so I've got 29 lines in there but I want to get it down here so I will go into tmux copy mode visual selection and go down and down and down yeah. well what what is this what's going on here is this is this my power line? Tmux is selecting my power line. Bad Tmux. Bad Tmux. And that's because Tmux is a terminal emulator program. It's just going to show what shows up on this terminal. And as far as Tmux knows, what shows up on this terminal is this weird garbage down here where you've got like this line and this test and, and even this stuff up here, this buffer stuff. Oh, oh gosh, I just scrolled up. I scrolled up in the screen. Tmux thinks that above this, above return string, is this. Well, that's super weird, and I'll prove it to you. Up we go in our buffer. Up do we go to the top of the... What's going on here? This is what's outside of the buffer, because this buffer is being redrawn actively by Vim. Because Vim doesn't display the whole file, it just displays the portion that you're looking at. So this stuff right here, as far as Tmux knows, that part is gone. It doesn't exist on this terminal. So we can't go multi-screen. 
we have to do something different. And what we're going to do is integrate this much better with Vim's buffer system, because Vim's buffer system is way better than Tmux's uh, buffering system. And part of that is integration, and part of that is like, Vim is actively redrawing every point on the screen, so I, I can't expect a lot out of Tmux, unless you like, compile it from source and roll it with Tmux inside it. It's something weird. But what we're gonna do is something a little bit better. We are going to make a little function, and I have the link in there for it, send Z buffer to home.clipboard. Very, very useful. So we're actually just going to set up a redirect for the command output to home, the file, home.clipboard. And Vim can redirect stuff into files. So we're fine there. And it looks like we're going to echo register Z for that. So I'll take this. Well, I mean, this is the function. So when I run this function and I, I run it by calling a, where am I? Oh yeah, it's not there, it's over here. A gist, yay. We yank something into the Z keyboard, Z register, and then we silently call send Z buffer to home.clipboard and hit enter at the end of it. So mine is leader C, uh, but I also do uh, carriage return, which is what I normally have on Windows stuff. And then in order to paste back from it, you call home.clipboard put, which is pretty much the same thing, except it's uh, getting an output. It's setting the clipboard, the contents of the Tmux clipboard to home.clipboard. And then you're letting the Z register equal the system command cat home.clipboard. So you're getting the output. So it, it goes back and forth so that I can do things like this. Um, let's see. It's too early still. Um, I don't know, I guess. So imagine I ran a very complicated command and that was the output. With here, with here, with here. Here, I can copy to the Tmux clipboard. And then up here, if I want that, I can get it um, by doing the same thing. So the, the clipboard's integrated at this point. And I can do this, that really long string that's too long and will be truncated and will add visual glyphs for stuff and put it down here and a string returns correctly without these visual glyphs um, so yay uh, next one is this, this long list of objects VAP will select the whole thing even if it's off the board or off the terminal as far as Tmux is concerned and put it down here and now I've got the whole thing and it all pasted in from the top to the bottom so we've got uh, yeah. Ta -da. I think that's it <laughs> it just gets to be a pain to have to do this stuff uh, over and over again Oh, that's a, a keyboard macro where I take code that I highlight in here and then I want to move it down there I normally have to copy it to that magic clipboard home.clipboard by doing that and then switch windows and then paste and then hit enter and then switch windows back and optionally select what I had selected before so visually, it looks like this. Clear that a little bit. 
There we go. So bang on. One key press. And my cursor goes back up here where I'm I can continue working. So if I've got stuff like this. Um, uh, the point is to keep out of this window as much as possible because my text editing power comes from window windows comes from vim sorry i'm trying out a new key map there we go comes from vim and that's not that doesn't apply down in a python interpreter You just move stuff around really easily and no wait, I didn't call that right. Print. Printed that a little bit prettier, but the point is, uh, I don't want to be doing. I print, bang on, and then I'm like, okay, cool. Now I want to pretty print it, and I'll just print that, and let's go to the well, add all the way over to the yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, I forgot to. Uh, Import. Oh wait, no, no, it uses a different print, print it. yeah, there we go. Instead, I'm up here editing text, and it's much easier to pp print, we surround that, the copy. It works much better. Um, so that integrates the Vim and the Tmux clipboard, and I feel like I've spent too much time telling you all this. Uh, but this is available as a gist. I'll put the link up there. It should probably be more than a gist, but whatever. Uh, it's not a plugin. All you're doing is copying stuff to the clipboard or redirecting output to the clipboard. You save stuff into a register and you send that register to the clipboard. You end the redirect, and this is just a little tweaky thing because the redirect command has a new line in front of it. So if you want to get exactly what you put in, it need, you need to do this, and that just trims off the beginning new line at the the beginning of what comes of this output, and then it tmux load buffers into the clipboard or from the clipboard file. And this actually was a problem because there is a save buffer command which does pretty much the same thing except kind of not. Because the save buffer command has an undocumented. Yeah, has an undocumented command limit. And there's a nice little issue there where Tmux says, don't do it, lol. And what they should have said was, don't do it. And because you should be doing this instead. Uh, so once I found that, everything blue open and now it's very easy to maintain a, a regular Python memory space where you can build objects and work with stuff and tweak things while you're testing code and make sure that your output is good and not be doing you know oh hang on let me try up this so it doesn't really do this with an A instead because you don't have any of your Vim keys. I can sit here and JKW BBB and change word and it just types it out. So <laughs> that's not very helpful. It, see, I'm still typing it. So hopefully this will help you out. Um, the link to that gist will be in the description and you'll be able to enjoy super speedy coding because now you're coding with portals, I guess. I don't know. You're, you're, you're doing your text manipulation in Vim instead of down here. And uh, you're seamlessly copying stuff over to your Python interpreter and getting output out of it. 
Um, alternatives, and I've been exploring them. NeoVim is cool, and I really want to get into it some more because the the term command is super cool. Being able to mess around with that output, uh, you viewing the terminal output, uh, piping stuff directly to it, and getting results, and then being able to copy those results immediately is super awesome. Um, there's Vim Shell, which is actually deprecated and not being maintained at this point. Uh, but Tmux does a lot. I don't know. Me and Tmux are we're going at it right now. So I'm making what I've got work as best as I can. And in the meantime, uh, I have been messing around with Emacs because this problem got to be that big of a deal. Um, but I'd much rather stay in Vim if possible. Tmux, or Vim, Emacs is a great operating system is the, the joke. Uh, it's actually not a joke. It's the truth. And Emacs is a great operating system. It's easy to develop stuff in. It's easy to send bits of data back and forth. Um, and it's ridiculously powerful. And it's bloated. It is. But it can do what Vim can't do because it's not designed to do it. So use what works best. Um, don't worry about the difficulty of learning these tools. You only have to learn. That's the, that's the thing about like Emacs and Vim. You only have to learn them once because once you learn them, you you will be extremely fast and you won't have to worry about uh, you know this company got sold to that company and my text editor is gone now or they don't support that anymore because there was a patent lawsuit about saving things to clipboards because Apple probably has a patent for saving things and then viewing things you don't have to worry about any of that because these projects are older than well they're at least older than I am um, these guys are made in the 70s and they're still going strong <laughs> it's not going away for a while so you don't have to worry and they've been the cool thing is that they've been actively developed since the 70s so it's like uh, I was I was joining lines joining a paragraph um, actually this is probably a good one <clears throat> this long paragraph we I'll just add it, uh, I'll set a text width to, let's do, where am I, 55, set tw equal 55 gq. So I'm writing some text and then I hit the end of line here. And at the end of the line, I want to, um, I want to make this into one complete line because I'm going to paste it somewhere else because I do all my text editing in Vim. Uh, and part of it had these leading things because it was a quote so it was like this and I was like all right well let me go ahead and just put that onto the same line and oh I guess this one doesn't do it gvim does it but um, when I did it it cut out these it's probably a setting it cut out these uh, these greater than signs because it detected that it was a quote and that I was prepping the line with this stuff over here and it cut it out and I was like you know someone somewhere 20 years ago was like wouldn't it be cool if it did this and then they did it and then me uh, 10 years later or 15 years later I'm like whoa where did this feature come from just having a project that's really that aged or that has aged so well and just really has that kind of development it's amazing it's amazing the stuff that it can do. Uh, Emacs, Vim, whatever. Any kind of long project that's being actively developed. So, this took way too long, and I apologize, and uh, whatever. <laughs>